Lens filters, you've got tons of them, whether it be for videography or photography, you've got ND filters, you've got CPL filters, you've got variable ND filters in lower strengths and in higher strengths, you've got mist filters, and now you've got mist ND and mist variable ND filters. Well, I've got them all right here. With one screw on base, you've got the seven in one magnetic filter system from Freewell. So let's get into it. All right, so this is a brand new system from Freewell. I'm not actually 100% sure of the price just yet. So of course that's gonna play a factor in if I would recommend this or not. But if you need a variety of filters and you don't wanna to have to deal with multiple cases with screwing them on, screwing them off, which I don't wanna to have to deal with, this system is a godsend. Now that's not to say that it's perfect and you'll see this as we go through and set this up in just a second, but my two main complaints about this are one, that the base is a little bit bigger in diameter than your lens. So I have a 77 millimeter filter here, but it's a little bit larger than the actual diameter of a 77 millimeter lens like uh, this one that I have here, which I'll show you this with today. And it's not huge, but that does mean, for example, that you're not able to use your lens hood on your lens while you are using these filters. So uh, their original standard magnetic filter system, which again is great, and they do have a range of different filters for that, which is really quick as well to change things out. That base is the same diameter as the lens, unless you're using step-up rings and stuff like that. Um, but that means that you can actually use that uh, filter system with your lens hood, for example. But anyway, my second and probably only other minor complaint is just that the base, the inner base that you use when you're using this as a variable ND system, and again, you'll see exactly how this is set up in just a second, is a little bit tricky to get out uh, without being worried that you're gonna drop it or just manhandle it and get fingerprints all over it. These are easy to clean filters, um, but still it's a little bit tricky or delicate, I guess, when you're removing or changing that inner base for the variable ND system. But these are just a couple things I want you to be aware of before we walk through this, so that way you can have that in your mind when you're looking at this as we set it up. So like I said, this is a seven in one filter system. It's not a seven in one filter, it's a seven in one filter system uh, with one single screw on magnetic base. Everything from there on is going to swap out magnetically, which is very, very quick and easy. We've got a two to five stop variable ND filter, a six to nine stop variable ND filter. We've also got mist versions of those, so a mist two to five and a mist six to nine variable ND filter. You've got a standard CPL filter. You also have an ND32, which is a five stop filter combined with CPL. You also do have that one eighth mist filter, which is the base for the mist variable ND. You can use it with just the base by itself. So we'll get this box out of the way and it comes in this little kind of semi hard protective case, which is really, really convenient for uh, transporting this. And all of the filters are in here. So this uh, gives you a way to bring them, to store them, and also just a quick way to switch them out. So in here, you might be able to see we've got one and two, uh, I guess you could say main filters. These are what we're gonna use as our CPL as our ND32 CPL, and also as our outer filters for the variable ND setup. Then we've got these two smaller filters in the middle here, and these are going to be our base filters for variable ND. You have one standard and one mist, and the mist, again, can be used alone just as a standalone 1 8 mist filter. Now they say 1 8 mist, and 1 8 is the strength of the mist, I guess. Um, it's actually going to cut your exposure by one or two stops, and I found that that may vary a little bit depending on your subject and the lighting, because backlighting can have a strong effect on mist filters so that will kind of play a little bit of a role in your uh, exposure change when you put that on but it's a 1 8 mist filter and then way over here you've got the base which right now does also have a magnetic cap on it so if we remove that cap you can see this is the base right here so you can see here the 77 millimeter uh, filter threads so you can see that the outer diameter of that base is a little bit larger and let's screw it onto a lens now and there it is Now on the thin outside rim of this, you do have a little arrow here. And so that's going to help you to line things up with the variable ND filter. Because again, the variable ND filters here do actually have hard stops and clear markings on the filters themselves. So very full featured and easy to use variable ND filters that are better than some uh, standalone variable NDs that don't have hard stops and don't even have clear numbered markings for the different stops along the way. So a totally non sacrificial design here. So this here is the variable ND base. You can see it has that label right on the bottom there. 
Uh, and this has a little tab right on this side that's going to slot into the little indentation right here on the side of the filter ring. And then you can just drop it in there. So to take it out, you have to kind of get your nail under this side, pull it out, and then pull it out like that. So there is a little bit of a notch there, so it's not going to just slide out on you when you're removing it. And get that in there, and then you drop it in. So then when you remove it, it does have a little bit of a notch to grab onto, so it's not just gonna slide and fly out of here. But you can see, I think, how it's a little bit easy to be worried that you might accidentally drop that or get fingerprints all over it, especially when you're out in the field dealing with this. But let's drop that in for now. Now this filter here, you can see, has CPL marked on one side, and it also has two to five stop marked on the other side. So the label that's facing out is the function that you are gonna be currently using. And if we look, for example, when we're using a two to five stop, if we look on the back side of the filter, there is a little notch in there that's going to sit in the frame in a way that it will uh, click into place and it will have those hard stops as you turn it. But when you flip this over and you use it with the CPL side facing out, then the back side has no notches. So it's just gonna be free spinning. It's not gonna have those hard stops. Uh, so depending on which function you're using, it's gonna work the way that it should work. And again, when you're using the CPL, you're just gonna to wanna to remove this VND base because that's obviously for the variable ND. So magnetically, we can just kind of drop this on here. And if it's not perfectly lined up, just as you turn it, it'll kind of, there you go. I don't know if you could hear that, but it'll snap right into place. And then once it's sitting in place, you can see there's a hard stop at five and then back at the lowest value here. So. That's how that works. Now, if I wanted to switch this out for a six to nine stop variable ND, I just take this off, drop it in the case, take out the six to nine stop and make sure that it's facing the right way with the six to nine stop label facing out. Drop it on, make sure it's notched in there the way that it should be. There we go. And now nine stops, six stops, simple as that. Now, if we remove the six to nine stop filter, you'll see on the other side of it, it uh, it's labeled as a ND32CPL. So this ND32 is the five stop CPL. So it's a combination of a five stop ND filter with that CPL effect. So if you put it on uh, in this direction, normally you would remove that inner base, so uh, ignore that. As you turn it, you can turn it freely and get that CPL effect on uh, reflections in water, for example, or you get a better color in your sky. Uh, but you're still getting that five stop ND effect as well. So it's a really nice combination filter there. Now with this setup, I was using the standard VND base. So if I wanna switch that out, let's just remove that, drop that into the case here and drop in the mist VND base, just like that. And you can see that one's labeled here as well. And then if we want a variable ND, let's pull out our variable ND again, get it on there, lined up, there we go, and that's our missed variable ND. So it took just about 10 seconds or so to switch from a standard whatever ND two to five, ND six to nine filter over to a missed filter, again, in combination with either of those variable NDs or by itself. And then the beauty of this system, just like with their standard magnetic system, is that if you don't want any filters in your lens, you can just pop all of these out magnetically, throw it back in the case, and you can use it just like that. You don't actually have to unscrew anything. Of course, if you want to put your lens hood back on here with this larger base than you will, but still you can use your lens without any filter on there in just a matter of seconds. So while they say it is a seven in one filter, it's actually kind of an eight in one filter if you count the fact that without unscrewing anything, you can use your lens just by itself. And although you can't put on a lens hood and there's no screw threads in here to put on a standard lens cap, again, they do include this magnetic cap that you can throw on there uh, for when you're not using your camera. So now I just wanna jump over to the computer and uh, show you some tests. I looked at uh, sharpness, I looked at color, I looked at the actual exposure difference, and I did draw a couple of quick comparisns, especially with color, uh, to the Polar Pro 2 to 5 and 6 to 9 stop variable ND filters. I don't have their missed version, unfortunately, uh, and this is the older version of their uh, variable ND filters, but we'll take a look at that right now. All right, so let's just take a look at a few different things in uh, no particular order. Throughout all of these tests, if you're wondering how I was judging this, I was looking at the back of the camera for this white chip here just to have just a bit of that highlight warning uh, coming on and just uh, adjusting my exposure so that way that was pretty much identical in all of the shots. 
One thing I want to point out here before we really get into this is just uh, if we take a look at, for example, these two pictures right here. This is uh, just the base by itself. On the left, we have just the standard very ND base, but the, there is no 2 to 5 or 6 to 9 stop uh, filter on the front yet. Yeah, it's just the base. On the right side here, this is the mist variable ND base. So as with any mist filter, using a backlight, my setup was like this here. So I had this backlight coming behind the color checker passport. As with any mist filter, it's going to give you that uh, kind of hazy look that kind of takes on the color of whatever that backlight is. If this was a colored backlight, blue or red or whatever, then you would get sort of that uh, tint to that haziness over the whole image. And of course, that continues as you go through with uh, the different stops of uh, ND as well. As long as you have the mist base in there, it's going to have that same kind of misty, hazy effect. And you can see here that the lighting really does have a pretty significant effect because these both have that mist variable ND base in there. But on the right, I turned off the backlight. And you can see it's a pretty dramatic effect. It looks like there are totally two different filters on here, but there are not. The only thing that changed is the backlight, which is out of frame, uh, was turned off. And if we look at these photos here on the top left, there is no filter on there. On the top right, we have the standard variable ND base in there. So you can see a little bit of a difference in exposure here, 1 30th of a second uh, for the standard shot and then 1 15th of a second. So one stop difference with the standard variable ND base in there. And then down on the bottom here, we have 1 13th of a second. So just over one stop of a difference uh, with the missed variable ND base in there. So uh, without the backlight, you can see there is still a difference between the two bases but it's much less significant. Now let's zoom into 100% here right on this little plus mark in the center. And let's go through all of the different stops of variable ND here and uh, just take a look at how it affects uh, sharpness. These are at 70 millimeters, so it's not extreme telephoto, but uh, it is, you know, a medium focal length. Uh, and you can see, I think, this is a 61 megapixel uh, camera, the A7R4. And from no filter on the top left all the way down to nine stops on the bottom right, you can see here this is 15 seconds exposure. Uh, it, it's not visibly different in my opinion, to my eye at least. Uh, there is, I could safely say, no effect on sharpness, at least at 70 millimeters. So it may affect, of course, longer focal lengths a little bit more, but I think that with this performance, I would be confident that the effect will be as minimal as it could possibly be. Now, if we go through uh, with the mist base and look at sharpness again, of course, overall, the image does get a bit hazy, but in terms of resolving details, crisp edges on uh, this plus, for example, uh, on the edges of the black frames around the color chips, I think it still looks fantastic. So even with the mist base, even with nine stops ND on there, it still does a fantastic job. And now if we take a look at uh, no filter on the top left here, and then we have nine stops of ND on the top right here. And then on the bottom, I actually have the uh, Polar Pro six to nine stop ND filter at its maximum. Uh, it's marked as nine stops, but you'll take a look down at the bottom here. Nine stops should be 15 seconds, but the Polar Pro is only at six seconds. So actually nine stops on the Polar Pro six to nine stop filter is not quite nine stops where the free will filter, I found that the markings were very, very accurate. And also in terms of sharpness, these pictures were not taken back to back. I did move things and put them back uh, in between these two series of shots, testing the free will filters and testing the Polar Pro filters. But if anything, I would say that the Polar Pro does affect sharpness just a little bit more, but the difference is very, very negligible. Again, there is also a standard CPL, uh, and this is without the filter on the left and with the CPL on the right. And if we're looking at the exposure here, again, we've got 1 30th second on the left with no filter and 1 15th of a second with the CPL. So it cuts about one stop, maybe just a bit more. If we're looking at this, it looks a little bit dark uh, in comparison. So maybe one and a third stop around there in terms of light reduction. Now, like we saw, there is also an ND32 slash CPL filter included. That's a five stop ND filter combined with a CPL. And we can see the difference here. On the left, we have the standard uh, variable ND at five stops. And on the right, we have the ND32 uh, slash CPL filter. And then the water here, uh, especially up in the front of the frame, you can really see the difference as the sun is reflected 
off of the rushing water here in the left. On the right side with the CPL here, we've really cut out a lot of those reflections to get, I think, a cleaner looking uh, image, as well as the reflections from the water on this rock right on the side of that rushing water. So it's a bit less distracting. Uh, and you can also see in the leaves on the tree here, let me zoom in just a little bit, a lot of these reflections from the wetness of the leaves, the sun shining on the wet leaves, is just taken out uh, with the CPL filter on the right here. So if we look at the top shot here with no base, we're at 1 of a second. If we go down to the two stop uh, ND filter, we can see we're at 1 of a second, so that's two stops. If we go down to five stops, we can see we're a little bit over actually, five and two thirds uh, of a stop. So this is the only place here where I found that the marking on the filter was just a little bit off. But then if we jump up to the six stop ND filter, we're at two seconds. Again, that's perfectly six stops. And all the way down to nine stops, we're at 15 seconds, which again is perfectly nine stops. So overall, I think that the markings on the filter are pretty accurate uh, and easy to judge your exposure just by counting and calculating from your base exposure uh, when you're framing up your shot. Now, one of the thing that you might notice here is a bit of a color cast. These are, again, the Freewell filters, and all of the white balances are set the same. I set it for this uh, naked lens shot, and then just copied that white balance across all the shots so you can see the effect of the filters here. Now, let's zoom in uh, extreme close-up on this color chip here. Let me just grab that by itself, zoom in as much as I can. And then we'll grab uh, two, five, six, and nine. And so you can see here that uh, there is a bit of a warm color cast that gets a bit stronger as you go from two to five to six to nine stops of ND. Now, if we're looking at the actual color temperature of this chip on the top left, again, this is the naked lens. We're at 5254K and uh, 2.1 uh, magenta shift. So if I grab the white balance tool and just click on this ND9, you can see we jumped to uh, 4573. So that's probably about a 700 Kelvin difference uh, and a little bit of a tint difference there as well. If we go down to uh, six stops, then it's more or less the same. If we're at five stops, then it's not as drastically different. or maybe closer to 300 uh, Kelvin difference. My math might be wrong. My memory is not as good as it used to be. And then if we're at two stops, um, it's about the same. So the two to five stop has a similar uh, effect on the color here. And the six to nine stop, whether it's at six or nine stops, again, has a, a relatively similar effect of, I, I guess I'd say a maximum of about 700 Kelvin difference from our base without the filter. And let's take a look at these four compared to uh, the Polar Pro. So the top four, the first four, one, two, three, four here is two, five, six, and nine stops of ND with free will. And then the last four here, here, and here, and here are two, five, six, and nine stops with the Polar Pro filters. And the Polar Pro filters I found are actually pretty clean in terms of color cast. As you can see here, there's much less of a significant color cast. Somehow I got the strongest color cast at two stops of ND. Um, but other than that, it actually looks very, very clean. So just be aware that the one drawback I found on these free will filters is that it does warm up your image a little bit. One other thing that I wanted to take a look at was flare, and so I got a flashlight and kind of tried to shine it on the lens and then just keep it there uh, as I switched out the different filters. So this is with uh, no filter on there. This is the flare that we're getting uh, just the lens by itself. So you can see a little bit of an orb right here, uh, and of course that wash over the entire photo itself. If we take a look at this shot here, this is with the ND32 slash CPL filter, which is also used uh, for the six to nine stop ND filter if you flip it around. And you can see that that orb uh, was magnified and we do also see a bit more of this orb right here, which might have been there before, I'm not exactly sure, but it's definitely noticeable now. Uh, so you can see a bit of an effect on flare right there. And that does carry through to the other filters. So this is just with the standard base there. And you can see it's, I think, a little bit less noticeable, but we can still see uh, more than without it. This little orb in the corner here getting picked up. And then this here is with the ND5 on top of that. So it's pretty much the same between the base by itself and then with the ND5 on top of there. And of course, once we pop the mist filter on there, like I said, it picks up backlight uh, quite a lot. So 
the flare becomes kind of irrelevant. At this point, the effect of the mist base is the main thing that you're seeing there. So that's what we got in terms of flare. Uh, when I was using it out uh, in the wild, I guess you could call it, you know, it, uh, flare did show up uh, from time to time. As this loads, you can see some little orbs here and there, but uh, it wasn't anything overly significant. We've got another little uh, thing popping up right here. Uh, if we look at a couple other shots, uh, I believe it did show up here and there, but it was really, really an extreme uh, situation when I was really shooting right into the light. Not perfect in terms of flare, but uh, not terrible in my actual real world experience. So overall, I love things that make shooting quicker and easier uh, and make it so that way I have to carry less with me to get more functionality. And that's exactly what this is. I mean, I can switch through different filters in a matter of seconds and I've got it all right here. It's protected, it's easy to transport, take out, put away very quickly. And just like with a standard uh, magnetic system, if you wanna go back to using just a standard lens with no filters, that too just takes seconds. And although one of my complaints was that this base is a little bit larger than the diameter of the lens, it's still not huge. And I've had standard variable ND filters that were larger than this. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not much of an issue at all. Um, just be aware that you're not gonna be able to pop your lens hood back on. And if you wanna put a standard lens cap on here, you are going to have to quickly remove this base. But it's only one thing that you're attaching or removing each time you want to use this system. So would I recommend this? If you're a filter user, absolutely. I mean, it's everything you could possibly need. You can do long exposures with that nine stop ND. You can get nice, clean, clear, uh, reflection free water with uh, the CPL or the ND32 CPL. Uh, there's just a lot you can do with this. You get that artistic mist effect and you can combine that again with ND. So it's just a huge range of things that this kit will give you all in one very quick and easy to use system. May not be the cheapest thing, but you're purchasing into basically seven high quality filters at the same time. So consider that when you're considering the price, whatever it ends up being. But after having bought four of their standard magnetic filters myself, because I love the system so much, I can say that uh, I'm confident it's gonna be a good value. And even without knowing the price yet, I can say that if this is something that you're looking for, it's absolutely going to be worth the money. But if you have any other questions or comments, please do let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, if you liked this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.